I've done a few videos on growing potatoes indoors but in containers. So in this video, it is all about growing potatoes outside. I'm going to show you how to set up your potato patch and also to hill potatoes or not to hill potatoes. That is a question. Let's go. What's going on my plant peoples? I am the ADHD gardener where I use gardening, houseplants, and humor as a form of mental health therapy. And welcome to my potato patch. I've been growing some potatoes outside for a few years now, but I really need to get my, you know, my act together and do it the proper way. So I'm going to show you guys how I set this up. And of course, my dad had to put in his two cents and tell me a little thing or two about potatoes. I mean, I already knew a lot of this stuff, but again, he had to just reinforce you know the real need to kind of do it properly and that's exactly what I did this time and I'm kind of proud about how I did it if you have tried growing potatoes before and it didn't really necessarily work out it's okay you know I mean it is a trial and error and we do get better over time so just you know chalk it up to a learning experience that's okay because you know what my dad had a lot of you know a lot of stuff to say about me and my potato patch so it is what it is. First things first, let's talk about the spuds. Now, when you have your potatoes, of course, we already know if you leave your potatoes over the counter, you know, like on your kitchen counter over time, they start growing these little chits. I call them eyeballs. So those little sprouts that come out of the potato, that is what we're going to be planting. You're going to pick an area in your backyard, wherever you already know this chip is probably going where he's not supposed to be going. Okay, focus. Oh. You're going to find a spot in your garden or in your backyard that's got a lot of sun. Potatoes need lots of sun in order to make a lot of this stuff happen. So you pick your spot, now we start getting the digging. There's a few nutrients that I'm going to be using inside of the soil. If your soil is not amended, let's just say it's just like a regular dirt patch, or maybe you do have a little garden spot but it needs a little bit of work, I'm going to be adding some stuff to the soil. We got compost, we have gypsum, we have granular fertilizer, we have maybe a little bit of lime if your pH in your soil is a little on the low side. There's a lot of stuff that you can add into the soil to amend it and make it a little happy for your potatoes. After you've amended the soil, maybe you've added some compost, some granular fertilizer, but for me, this year is the year of gypsum for some reason because my dad will not stop talking about gypsum. So I'm like, what in the world is that stuff and how is that relevant to my garden? Apparently gypsum is really pretty good when it comes to breaking up the soil, especially if you have clay soil, compacted soil, and it's just going to add a lot, you know, a lot of more nutrients. So once you've already amended all that soil, now it's time to make the rows. What's your plan? I might as well make a video out of this. All right. Here you are in your uh, potato, potato patch. Pot, potato patch. Okay. The reason I tell you to leave like a three foot walkway between the rows, 30 to 36 inches, it's not just for walking, it's for healing material. Okay. Look, she's digging this out. And all this space right here. You're, it's not just to walk, but you're going to need all this to heal these potatoes. And then you, talk, then you talk about, I don't do healing. Have you ever seen any potato videos? With I do healing in containers, but that's a lot of work for me to be doing that. You got to do it. Get your hoe. You got to do it. Okay. That's what are you trying to do then? You're that's Jose's pass. work then. Okay. Well, this is new soil that I'm just breaking up this year. Now look how crappy this soil is looking. It's got a bunch of branches in there. It's got a lot of rocks and it's just not looking that hot. Then you have over here, this has been worked for a long time, at least a few years, and this is looking a lot better. So I'm trying to get this area to look like this. Yeah, that's the compost right there. So that is going to get dumped over here. I to all those roots out. Uh, yeah, I have to pull out the roots, I have to pull out rocks, I have to pull out anything that's just, you know. Your bed looks way neater than mine. No, no. So he, he raked it. Oh, I, I didn't rake it yet. Ripped out the roots, all that while y'all was playing. And then I ripped out the big rocks, and then um, I raked the smooth. Garden lime you can find anywhere in there, you know, in the garden centers or home improvement stores. This you don't even need to use all the time anyway. This is just to fix the pH of their soil. If I am correct in what I was thinking, I'm assuming this is what is you would use to raise your pH. So you're not going to be needing this all the time. Maybe just like, you know, every year, you know how you're always, you know, testing your soil and stuff. That's how you're going to figure out if your uh, soil test results are going to require lime. Other than that, this is just something like a one or two time deal, and then you're good to go. Gypsum is a soft sulfate material that's actually found in the earth. 
It is mined up and it actually has, I believe, calcium something in there. It looks like granular because with the lime, it's powder that also comes pelletized. But the lime gets more, I mean, the powder does get absorbed a lot faster than it would with, you know, when it was pelletized. This is, you know, this is kind of like slow release. So this is actually going to work out great for providing uh, some serious calcium sulfate, right? Did I say that right? I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Last but not least is some 1010 fertilizer. Now, normally I really don't use any of this stuff, but being that I was given, you know, I was given it to me for free, then I'm gonna be using it. If you don't have this, well, that's pelletized also, granular. See? Can I grow a dog if the dog is just laying on the ground like that? Hmm? What are you doing, Peanut? Mm-hmm. This is a rare Peanut sighting, because usually you see Chip, but this time, Peanuts are all up in the video in all her glory, right? Yeah, I put uh, all three of them, spread them around. I don't want to get too greedy. I'm stick too many in there. Something. Get back. Get out of here. Another thing that you could really, really be adding to your potato patch, depending on the size of your area that you're going to be growing potatoes, is <laughs> irrigation. And of course, Freddie had to make an appearance with his crow. We're talking irrigation here. Now, if you don't have a large space, where you would need some irrigation, then you don't really have to worry about it because maybe your patch is small enough where you could just use a watering can or maybe just like a hose. But I have a large area right here. It goes that way and it goes that way. That's a lot of potatoes. And frankly, I'm not beat to just kind of like come out here with a hose. That's a lot of work. So that means I added irrigation. I'm gonna do another video separate on irrigation because it's actually, you know, really detailed. But just know that I added irrigation to my potato patch when it comes, you know, so I can feed it water and maybe some possible nutrients in the future with liquid fertilizers. I'm gonna pop those potatoes inside of the trenches. We're gonna just lay them down, eyeballs up, chits up. After we put those potatoes inside of the trenches, I'm gonna space them out at least maybe about eight inches to a foot. It depends on the person, okay? Ideally, that's what you would wanna do, eight inches to a foot apart. I mean, depending on your space, I'm having limited space, so I'm gonna cram in a bunch of potatoes in this little area. Is it advised? Probably not, but I'm gonna make it happen. Thank you. What else we got? Wait, wait, wait. Wow, 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 wow. Huh? Slow it down, slow it down. Oh, All right, that's good right there with the cut side down. Oh, yeah, yeah, keep going. Come on, do your thing, boo. Wait, it's too close, it's too close. It is too close. That one is too close, there you go. There we go. Oh my knees. That's why you're not supposed to be on your knees. Yeah, but like, how am I gonna do this? Squat. Really? Yeah, um, yeah, really. I look like a frog. You do. And that's cool. All oh. right, all right, that's all you can get in there. Put I, those I, back in the bag. I would put more in, in no, that no, sucker. No, no, way too many. Here, put those back in the bag. I would do two rows of that in, in, in that in that small little space. That's why you don't get nothing. I do get no, something in there. You don't overdo it like that. No. I'm going to overdo no, you it. You know what? If you want to get more potatoes like what? that, right? Don't worry about it. Just put them in holes. And out of, let's say you got four or five eyes, and uh -huh. they all will give you some, but they'll just be smaller. Okay, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, but here, put those back in the bag. Everything is content. And don't forget to <laughs> like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and you can see her on Instagram and Facebook. And we're road to 9,000 subscribers. Yes! That's what I'm talking about. Well, it's that time again with the potatoes. Now that you've gotten your potatoes to this size outside, it is time to do something called hilling. What we're gonna do is gonna take a bunch of this soil and just cover up the stems. Just like we were doing in the containers that I showed you in the other video, every time those plants start to grow up and a lot of the stem starts to show up, we're gonna be covering that. We're gonna take this soil that's right here, split them on all of those beds. Notice how those are really, really tall. I have not held them yet. Some of those potatoes that are coming up, those are too small to hold them. I mean, you, you could if you felt like it, but that's really not that necessary. Over here, over here, this is where we start hilling because this is a lot. These right now, those are just coming up, so they're babies. Those don't need anything done to them yet. So we're gonna take that soil, push them over, and cover it until just the tops are showing. This is from underneath. As it builds up, this shovel is awful for that, okay? Then we bury it. We have to bury the whole thing. The leaves and everything? Of course. 
I didn't think you did that. Huh? I didn't bury my leaves. You didn't? No, I just buried the stem. Oh, you gotta bury the whole thing. It'll come up in about three days, it'll come back up again. Oh shit, I didn't know that. Well, I thought I was just burying the yeah. stems. Come on, boy. I gotta modify my video. I did not cover my stem. I mean, I didn't cover my leaves. Man, I do that all the time, on, even in my buckets, and they keep coming through. And about wow, that. I thought it was just the stem. Okay. Okay, this is what I'm thinking, all right? If my dad says to cover all the potatoes, even the leaves, all right, maybe there is some validity to it. Of course, we already said that it's an option, it's a personal preference. You know, regardless if you cover the leaves or not, it's still going to, you know, grow some more potatoes. But I'm just gonna like see right here. I'm gonna cover them and see what happens. Just for shits and giggles. You know what I mean? I mean they're still gonna grow both ways. But you know, I'm gonna see what you know what's the big deal about his way. That's all. Obviously, I didn't really cover all of the potatoes. Now I'm thinking the reason why I couldn't cover all of them is one, there's not enough dirt. And that is why probably my dad kept mentioning and emphasizing the spacing in between the rows. So that's cool. Either way, they're still gonna grow. But I was thinking that also the reason why I couldn't cover it completely leaves and all is because I let them grow too tall. So they are already way too tall for me to completely cover them with all that soil. So I should have been healing them a lot sooner than they are right now. Will they still grow? Yes, they will. Will you get as much potatoes as you would have if you healed earlier? I don't know. I guess we can call it an experiment. You never really know. See how tall these gotten? I should have been healing them a long time ago, but I didn't. So I'm going to be healing them again, and that's probably why I didn't, you know, I couldn't cover them all together in the first place because I didn't have enough soil and also I was not here soon enough to be covering them when they first started sprouting out of the ground. But it's okay. Well, we still get potatoes. We still will. But look at that. I got rows. I got rows. One, two, three, and the little patch over there. And we got a little poochie called Chip. Jibby Chip. Oh, yeah, it's so cute. I don't know. I think I'm going to leave the potatoes, you know, the leaves sticking out. I kind of like seeing them. So I think it's going to be a personal preference as to, you know, how tall or if you're going to cover your potatoes and see if that's going to work. <laughs> My dad said that you would want to heal your potatoes at least maybe two times, possibly three, depending if you have enough soil to heal over or, you know, something like that. I would say that, I mean, I already healed one time. I'm probably going to be healing at least one to two more times also. And that's it. We're just going to let our potatoes grow and grow and grow until the end of the season. Now, how do you know when your potatoes are ready to be pulled out of the ground? I want to say toward the end of the summer. All right, I'm looking for the leaves to get all yellow and dyeish looking. That's when I know that the potatoes are kind of ready. I mean, we're not really there yet, obviously, because we're just starting the potatoes. But I guess we'll do another video on when, you know, when to harvest them. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got some really good information out of it and some encouragement as well. If you did enjoy this video and you want to show me some love, then don't forget to smash that like button. I really appreciate it. Also, if you haven't already, then consider subscribing. I drop a video twice a week, one short and one long. Last but not least, you can catch me on Facebook and Instagram. I, I'm on there all the time. Basically, you can drop me a message. We can chit-chat. And also, I'm, we're going to be laughing about a lot of memes and whatnot. So until the next episode, you guys, where you and me both are going to be growing our happiness one plant at a time, one day at a time. I'll check y'all later in the next episode. Peace and love.